Hello YouTube, this is Dazza the Cameraman. Today is Sunday, February 28th, 2016. And this is a follow-up to my video, Flat Earth, Angular Size of the Sun Debunked. Uh, and in this video I showed the angular size of the Sun as we saw it when the Sun was at different uh, altitudes in the sky. 11 degrees, 47 degrees and 66 degrees altitude angle. Now in this video I'm actually going to play the uh, the original video clips um, so that you can see how I went about this and focusing the camera and uh, and so forth. It is 7.44 a.m. on Friday the 12th of February 2016 and we're looking at the sun a little after uh, sunrise. I'm going to zoom right in on the sun and let the camera adjust so it's properly focused. That's at full zoom. Just adjust that down a little bit. Okay, I'm going to adjust the uh, focus so it's on manual focus. It's now on manual focus and set to infinity and that is with the camera at full zoom just check that yes it is and uh, we're going to check the angular size of the Sun um, at this time compared to later on when the Sun is high and the sky will do the same thing so that's at maximum zoom at the time is now 7.45 let's zoom out and check the camera at um, with the zoom right out there as you can see the uh, the trees and so on just above the horizon so we'll check this again later okay the time is just coming up to 10:52 a.m. on Friday the 12th of February 2016 and the Sun is uh, just coming up to 48 degrees altitude so let's zoom in on it again and let the camera stabilize and we are now at full zoom. I'll just let that stabilize and let's lock in the manual focus. Put it on infinity. There we go. I'll just check that the zoom is all the way in. Yes, it is. We zoomed all the way up. So we'll compare the angular size of that to the shot that we took earlier this morning. Just zoom all the way back out again. and now the zoom is all the way out okay it's just gone 1 30 p.m. on Friday the 12th of February 2016 and the sky the Sun is now at its um, highest point in the sky it's right on the meridian and is at 66 degrees so that's the highest point that it's going to get in the sky today for this time of the year and uh, as before, let's zoom right in on the sun and let the camera adjust and then I'll set the manual focus. Get it nice and steady. Okay, lock in the focus. Set it to infinity and let me just double check the zoom, make sure it's zoomed all the way in and yes it is. So there is the angular size of the sun at 66 degrees altitude on Friday the 12th of February 2016 as seen from my location. Let's zoom that right back out again and uh, then we'll go and compare the angular size of all three shots from about an hour after sunrise this morning from mid-morning and now from when the sun is at its highest point. So here we are looking at screenshots from our three videos of the sun at 7.44 a.m. 10.52 a.m. and 1.30 p.m. and we can see that the angular size is exactly the same regardless of the angular altitude of the Sun and the distance that it would be according to the flat earth model we see that there is no difference in the angular size now I should say at this point too that I've noticed in the um, feedback comments on my first version of this video is that some people have queried the fact that my video doesn't show the date and time on the images that I've actually added them uh, here as you see here. With the digital camera there is no way to display the uh, date and time. Um, I can display it on the display in the LCD on the camera 
and I can get it to output onto a TV that I've connected the camera to, but as far as the video file, the date and time is not recorded into the image, it is saved into the video file as metadata. So I've had to add the date and time manually as you see here. So some people have actually queried the fact that, well, I could have, you know, I could have faked the date and the time and all that sort of thing. Well, if I really wanted to do that, of course, I could just uh, change the date and time on the camera before I film each clip. Uh, which would have the same effect anyway. But if anybody really questions my integrity on this or the authenticity of the date and time in the images that I've shown, there's a simple solution. Try it yourself. Take your camera and a welding lens, uh, number 12 or number 14 if you can get one, and try the same experiment. Try it for yourself and make sure that you zoom the camera right up on the sun so that you're at full optical zoom. Make sure that your digital zoom is turned off because you don't want to use digital zoom. Make sure that you set your camera to manual focus and set the focus to infinity so that your image is not blurred and so that you're not seeing a blur instead of the sun's disk. Make sure that you set the exposure accordingly so that the image is not overexposed and turned into a big ball of glare. So as I say, if you have any doubts about the authenticity of the date and time, um, simply try it for yourself. That's the simple solution. Here is the comparison of the three images and a protractor is shown here showing the different angles at 11 degrees at 7.44 a.m. 47 degrees at 10.52 a.m and 66 degrees at 1.30 p.m. when the sun was at its highest point in the sky. Now how does this compare to what we should see? Let's take a look. Okay, here is the angular size calculator that was provided uh, by Mick West from Metabunk. And as we can see, uh, we've got our sun set at 3,000 miles altitude. The diameter of our sun is 32 miles in diameter, and this is our viewing angle here. Now this represents the angular size of the sun. Now I should point out that the angular size of the sun is shown here is not to the same scale as the altitude and diameter of the sun. But as the angular size of the sun changes, that change is to scale with our angle and uh, viewing distance. Okay, So at the moment I've got this set to 11.5 degrees, and this is the angular size by comparison of what the sun should look like at that distance. When I drag this back so that we're looking at 47 degrees, you can see that the sun up the top there is, is larger. So 47, let's make that about 47.5. Okay, so that's the angular size of the sun compared to what it was before at 47 degrees. And at 66 degrees, which was when the sun was at its highest point, that would be the angular size of the sun compared to where we started off. Point being, obviously, if I drag that down there and compare that to our height, it is not 3,000 uh, miles in diameter, we're comparing the change in angular size. So that's from 66 degrees down to, what did I say, 11.5 degrees. So that's a change in our angular size of the sun. This is what we should expect to see if the Earth is indeed flat. But this is not in fact what we see when we compare our images. Instead, what we see is that the angular size of our sun is exactly the same regardless of its uh, angle altitude and apparent distance away from us if the Earth were flat. So this debunks the flat Earth claim uh, about the sun being at an altitude of 3,000 miles regardless of the size because, you know, even if it's not 32 miles in diameter, let's say it's 100 miles in diameter, the point is that, as any child knows, when an object is closer to you, it appears to be larger. When it is further away from you, it appears to be smaller. But this is not the case with what we see 
with the real sun. And the same applies to the moon as well. I could uh, just as equally film the full moon rising and travelling across the sky, and the angular diameter of the full moon would remain the same as it travelled across the sky. There would be no change. Now there is more that I could add to this video, but I don't want to make it too long. As always, to check out my Facebook discussion page, Voices of Reason to Explain X or Vortex, you'll find a link in the description area. Thank you for watching.